Hi, I'm Jason Breach and welcome to another Woodworking Wisdom. So this session we're going to look at making a Japanese orientated fibre lamp. So this was a project thrown at me from a couple of people upstairs. Could you do this as a project? Now the first thing I looked at with this was, oh wow, okay, quite an exciting thing to make, something a little bit different. The next thing, look at all the joints in it. Now, they did give me a few disciplines on this, handmade only. We can go with some pre-machine material, but everything else has got to be done by hand. Now when I first looked, we'd got little halving joints. These are tiny. This is five mil square of the halving joint section that's got to push together, hold, and look quite accurate. And there's just a few of them. It's not like one or two. So I had to think about how we can make this easily. So we've started with some five mil square tulip wood. All right, so we cut this, machined it down to a board, ripped it into five mil strips, and then I've got one edge which has got a bandsaw cut on, which I can clean up easily later. Quite ugly set up. We also used some short lengths of tulip wood for the top and bottom frames. Those I actually had to hand plane down to size and get to an accurate thickness. So different things are built for that. We go through with the video. Then we've used, I think this is 15, 18 mil. We'll put it on the brief of leg material size, okay? So those are pre-machined. Now, again, as we said, we've got all these fancy halving joints and how things have got to go together. A little bit daunting. Most of us, when we look at this, will probably be put off by what you've got to achieve with this. Can you make it easier? Through the video, you're going to see the different little things I've thrown in that are going to make this easier. So, something like a powering board. You can make a thicknessing board for your block plane so we can get these accurately all the same size. All those little tricks play a part in this little video for you something to help you cut square, all right? Don't be put off, it's quite an interesting little lamp to try and do, all those little halving joints. If you set yourself up, think about how you're doing it, not actually that tricky. So hopefully you enjoy what we're gonna show you. All we've used for this, basic hand tools. So we've got a couple of Japanese saws. Why Japanese saws? Easier to control. Now definitely for the small halving joint, went with smaller Japanese saw, all right? Iki down, all right? So nice little saw, it can hold it, nice balance, not too heavy. We've only got to cut two and a half mil deep, so you don't want anything too heavy, okay? Japanese saw rasp helps me adjust things, and some standard Japanese type chisels, all right? So nothing that special as tools to make this. So hope you enjoy. We'll see the end result at the end of the video. Thanks very much. For the top and bottom frames on the lantern, we need to prep the material. Now, you might not have a machine planer, but you have that scenario of you've got the material, it's quite short lengths. We want to get it accurately down to size. Even if I had a machine planer, these might go through. They're too short to be pulled through nicely. So, what can we do? We've got something that's bandsaw cut. We've got a planed edge on the corners. So, I've ripped this off of a bigger square. We now want to thickness them down. We can actually do that on the bench. So we've made a little jig box holder that these will sit in. We've got a height position that we want, which is 10 mil. So the razor block, and then we can load it. We can skim a hand plane down through there. So we'll get you in so you can have a closer look at this. So with the little planing block to get these to size, we've got 10 mil step either side, a support button. So the plane will sit into here, run up and down, can only go down to the height. So it's resting on the side button. So that will give me the 10 mil. Lump stuff on the front. So we can load our bit of wood. And we know that when we plane this, it will skim down through, keep everything nice and accurate. So let's put that into place. I'll do the other side there, so I'll bring it up. Exactly the same, just skimming these. So we're taking those high spots off of that bandsaw cut. We'll take it down to our size. Nearly there. So you can see that little block is going to give us something now that makes this totally repeatable on size. We can double check, we can move around. That's good. So, exactly the same size. We put these on the bench. 
job and then get something nice and equal. All right, so simple little jig box, small block plane makes that task really simple. So you need eight of those. So we need eight cross rails done. What we need to do is shoot one end to stay up with. So we can use the shooting board just to give us a nice square end. That's going to help us mark up and measure for the next stage. Give us something to measure off that is square. So we need to shoot the ends and one end only to start with. Just to get it nice and square and cleaned up. So we'll get all those done and then we'll mark up the lengths we want. With the ends squared, we're going to put that up against the lamp stop. So the far end, push them all up. We take a measurement. I can measure it. From the end there, I'm going to go to that step, right there. I'm going to use our square, bring it in, we can push against it so it's up against the side. Double check down the far end what we've got, just going to come up that little bit. We can draw our line all the way across. We've got that nice clean scribe line, cut line, we can actually now cut them to length. And then we're going to trim them back with the shooting board, so we're going to cut just over. So get them all the same length when you cut them. If you bet they're quite small, we're just going to use some masking tape. I'm going to wrap it around there, pull it up. Now the masking tape will just hold them nicely in place with that line. I can bring that round. I've got a little block we've made with a right angle. I'll set over the top. That'll help guide our saw so we can cut these off. So I can just use that Japanese pull saw. So remember the weight of the saw is coming towards you. Cut those off. Another four just to do. And again, we're just over that line. We can trim back to the line with the pine. With the four strapped together, put an extra little bit of tape on the front to keep things square. We can now use the shooting board to trim all four in one go. Right, just nicely skim the ends off. Back to that knife mark. One look. So we've just marked out the joints, so we've been the centre line of the board overall, length to either end if you like. So we found the centre line. The panels we're going to drop in are 124mm long. So from the centre line we've got 62mm either side. Then we need the thickness of your leg, which is 10mm. Uh, this is our halving joint area in here. Alright, so we're going to mark that out. Just done it with a pencil so it makes it easy to mark out. You can rub it back out, you get things wrong. You need to be quite precise on this bit. Again, the masking tape's a good way of working just to hold things together. It gives you one board instead of eight little legs. So just move the pencil line down through. Slide that down just to give us again. Just in pencil, because if you do it in a knife or anything, it's going to permanently mark it. You might see some of it later. Then that gives us a guide of where we can go to our wheel marking gauge to give us our depth. So we're not overshooting out there. We can do that on each joint. I turn it over, I can do the same exactly on here. So I'll plot our line. One, two. Wheel gauge or cutting gauge to work in there just to give us a set line of how deep we want to be with the knife and the saw. So from there, we've obviously got our scribe. We've got to do the same, the other end. We've got the other pack of four to do exactly the same turn. I'm working off the top face where we've got all our marking out. To make things easier to cut, we've got a board that we can cut up against as a side stop here, scrap material, something to sit on, lump stop so everything will hit in one place nicely. We need to raise it up. So I've already looked at and done a little bit of maths. So I've worked out I've got my five mil half of showing 
on the face side here. So it gives me a guide of where to stop to. Little block again, this just goes over. This is one piece of ply that we cut, just sit on the top. That gives me something as a nice start block to pull the saw against. Keep my fingertips out of the way, I can position things over. Small Japanese pull saw, nice and controlled. Stiff back, this is ideal for little dovetails as well. Well, can't see that the back edge, so we'll have a look in a second. We can come up to our line. Just want to be there. Go down, hopefully. Down to our line, down to our line there, that's good. All right, check on the bulk. I'm also going to note a little cut just in the middle. We could do a couple a bit far over on that one, so let's bring another one in here. So we're not having to hit all those fibres in a minute when we chisel it out. To make the pairing easier, we've made up a simple pairing jig so the workpiece will drop in. The chisel's got a repeat stop to go up against, but also reduces the breakout with the back stop. So it gives us a way of coming across. This obviously gives us that repeat stop of depth. So I can push the work in, nicely held. I've got something to push against. Angle the handle down to start with, just pushing across, nice and gently. If we get lower, we can sit onto that platform so the back of the chisel sat nicely. Still got a little bit to go, look. So I'm still angling down, tidy bit. Work across. We can easily turn the work round. Push it in nice and firm. Just check we've got everything. But by having that breakout stop on the back edge, you haven't got anything that's going to break out and splinter off. So, nice and simple way of doing a little halving joint. So if the joints are a little bit tight, we can adjust them. So we've got Japanese rasp, okay? If you've seen my video on mortise and tenons, you'll know that's really useful. So quite a traditional Japanese tool. So I just want to take a tiny bit off. And again, using that holding board, and I've got that little jig, I can push it across, just cut a tiny bit off that face. Nice and fine, so I don't need a lot off. Things should then hopefully fit together. So that little halving joint, small section. Temptation here, I want to bash it or something. What you're going to find better, squeeze it in the vise. So put it in the vise to here, bring it in, we can squeeze it up each corner. That's more controllable than doing something like a mallet, definitely not a hammer. So the legs we've cut to length, all right, exactly the same way. Cut them, shoot the ends on the shooting board so you get them nice and square. Under here, I've marked out the joint sections where they're coming through either end. A pencil line, I've then just continued it around the corner so exactly the same as we did with the little frames. So we've got a little right angle joint, we know where we're going to do those. So we've cut them to length, shot the ends, mark your joints out, they're ready now to be cut. So I'm going to show you a couple of options on how you can cut them. All right, so we can set up the cutter there. This one, I've got to turn it round, it's going to be there. Right, so that's actually the same distance or thickness of the material that we're using. I'll put these in pairs, so uh, they go together there. Get the first one, move it up. I've got to go a bit deeper, so I need a razor. So what have we got? Let's cut leg razor. So I can use the MDF on the front here again as a stop block. Line those two back up. There, bring it up, get to your line. Again, using the side of the saw blade, get a bit of a reflection of that pencil line I can see so I know I'm cutting the correct side off. First two cuts done, we can do cut in the middle. Get 
can also then roll it over one to there, that one to there. Now, it might be easier to do these one at a time. Then we can use our block a little bit. That down, position the saw blade into that cut. Again, using the MDF towards me as a guide of how deep we can go. So we're going to do all our cuts. All right, get them all to there, then we chisel those out. Having cut the shortcuts, got a brake line in the middle. We can use the pairing board that we've got here so we can rest the chisel on it. Got something to chisel across. First few cuts, we can have the handle down low. Going to break the fibres out a little bit. I don't want to come all the way to the back edge. They have got to come out. There you go, look at that, beautiful. Okay, so. Just work across a bit. You know, we've got to come down quite a lot. Not hitting too hard. Okay. Down to a point in here. That's as far as we can go on the board now. We can do the clamp. Just going to take the work piece, we're going to turn it round. Put it back in. Clamp just makes it easier to hold it than chasing it up and down the bench. Again, handle down low. All the way across to them out. Already out the corner. If we take our clamp off, got our nice square shoulder here. Cut there, we've got this side still to come out. So I'm just going to turn it around again. We'll put the saw cut against that back fence. That again is trying to reduce any break out. Have something to pair up against. Just breaking the fibre there, not trying to go all the way through. Again, just going to bring it back round because this is the visible side, a bit more important. This is the side that any gap will show on. So meeting up with those shittle cuts we've done from the other side. Just cleaning in now, I've got five on the edge there. Slightly wider chisel. Down that face. There we go. A nice corner. So with all the chiselling done, this is what we're left with in the corner, that little five mil square. So that goes on, let's just check with the right way round. Haven't turned it round, that's good. There's slightly different lengths, that's got to fit on the outside. Top and bottom, look. Oh, I've got to pull that one in a bit. It's a bit of a fight, that. We'll go. Gently pull it down. A nice tight fit, these, which is good. Right down there. Feels good on there. Let's just stand it up, a quick look. So that's our frame, Got those joints cut. You can see why I said that chisel jig is so important because each of the corners on that little bit, that shows. So it's got to be nice and cleanly cut so that little pairing jig can take all the guesswork out of it. Next thing to do, got to chamfer all the corners. So on all the top corners and the outside edges, you want to put a chamfer around those. Nice and accurately, tricky to do. So I'm just going to go down to here. 
So to do our chamfer, I put the 45 degree angle block in, but actually clamped it onto that main back fence. Normally it can be used here, but that gives me a way just sliding this down. I come up to the stop, and I'm going to keep my hand pressure down in there. I can create a chamfered edge. Just turn it over one, bring it back in. I can work around them, just looking at the visual effect, see what we have. Lift it up a little bit. Now, I'll do all four sides. I want to keep the strokes quite consistent. So I've got a little chamfered edge all the way around. Just take those sharp corners off on the feet. So keep your strokes consistent. Count. Maybe do five. Have a look. Do the other end exactly the same. We've got to do all the small rails the same. All right. So quite a, a long task. This one just to do all those little bits. Okay, so with having cut all those halving joints, quite a lot, quite tricky little things. Um, I will say the project, with it being such a small scale, is quite testing. Uh, it's going to get a little bit more testing in a minute as well. We're going to go even smaller with those halving joints. So at this stage, we want to get these frames and legs all ready to glue up. So we've got the four bits for the frame, we've got eight of those. All the joints cut, we've got all the joints on here, so we can sand those very lightly. We don't need to do too much, we've done all the chamfers, we're not going to sand the chamfers, it's just really about sanding the long lengths, lose any pencil lines, anything there that you want to get rid of. So all we're going to use, bench stock, quilt block, a bit of hand abrasive paper. No power sanding with this, you're going to round the corners off too much, all right? So let's get you in, we're going to do that, and then we're ready for the next bit. So using just a bench stuff, now if I try and push your braces back and forwards, you're going to move them, so let's work in one direction. Just literally push it down that line. Do four of them from those small ones at a time. Having sanded that side, we're just going to rotate them, one movement, nice and gently, kick them over. By doing four of them at one time, it's more supportive of the block, helps things Hit the pitch squarer, saves your time, that's got to be a bit of Flip it over again. Last side to do all these. There's another four of these to do after these. And really just looking to make sure taking off any pencil lines. Just clean them up. Get rid of that dust out there. Look. I'm going to do the bigger frame ones as well now look, for the legs. So I'm going to do exactly the same. I'll bring those in. I bet we lose that off the bench. The other thing I did before we started doing this, had a bit of clean up. So I've lost all those chipped out fibres that we've chiselled off. If they could dent what you're going to do now if you lay them on top. In, just working down that grey direction. Got one in here, got a white line here, which would suggest a bit of torn grain. So I'm deliberately going to focus on that little area. I don't take too much off it, but just cleaning it up. And again, controlling the sanding strokes. That's good. So back into there, going to rotate one movement. Over. Now you're obviously going to repeat that for all four sides just to clean them up. Next stage after this, we're going to look at the gluing. So I'll keep sanding, we'll get you back in a second for the gluing up. You alright? Mm -hmm. Okay, so for the gluing up bit. We've got our frames, we've got two of these to glue up. Quite easy to do, so I'm just turning the joints over. The halving joints should pretty much be exactly the same. That's why it's a halving joint, isn't it? So we're hoping it could be nice and equal. Gonna use a little silicone glue brush. Don't need too much for all this. So my own, just to wipe it through. Into there. A little bit on the edge of this, so I wanna cut it back. Clean that off a bit, look. So we don't want loads and loads of glue in these. Just get too much glue, all we're going to do is squeeze it out. So if one done. Amazing how little we need. So 
you can see what we're doing with that glue brush. The silicon brush is quite nice for this because you have to put on a fine equal layer. That's good. Doesn't look a lot, does it? So then, I'm going to start putting it together. Turn that over. Put it in. Push down a bit. Put that one into there. Check it's lined up right. Oh, fit nice and tight. The glue will start to expand the wood fibres as well. Okay, so I've got a tight corner here. So, most people, oh, I'll get a big mallet and we'll start beating it. That's too small for that. So we're going to go to the vise. Just gently going to use the vise. Squeeze it together. Inside done. Turn it up. Feeling with my fingertips what's going on. This is more controllable, more accurate, less likely to damage anything. Right, so just working around them. So you get something that's nice and flush, cleaned all the way around, both sides. That's pretty good. So we've got our frames. So top and bottom frames, ready to go. So next stage, put them into the legs. So you've got the frames glued together, so we've got those two little squares. Look. We've got our legs, they're all sanded. Laid them in how they've got to go, so I've made sure, well not one that's back to front or anything. There's nothing worse than gluing one leg in and finding it's the wrong way up. So then we can actually start to assemble that main framework. So let's take those two off. Cut a couple of buttons just to help support this. I'll move our frames, look. So we want to glue these in. How do these go in? So let's have a closer look and we'll just give you an idea of what's going to happen. So, we've got our legs and our frame. How's this going in? Going in from the outside there. Squeeze it in. Push it up. All right. Quite simple to do, but we don't need loads of glue again. So, I'm going to have a little splodge of glue in here. Tricky to get down into there. We don't need much. Really putting it on that last little internal corner. Let's turn that glue stick round we can use. A little end, okay. So getting down into there, put the glue about a bit. We don't need loads. I think we've seen what we've done on there. Bring it into play, tighten it up, push it in nice and firm. Mine done. Gonna do the same down here. So it's worth working round. A little bit of glue. Yeah, don't need loads, get too much on here, just going to squeeze it out. The joints fit nice and tight, it'll help hold it, so that little bit of glue will just secure it in place. Check where things are, that's good. Double checking my leg position, that looks right. I'm going to bring that over. So for you guys, let's move it round. Roll that back off. And the whole time in reality, before I put the glue in, double checking the positions where I want things. Definitely not upside down. A tiny little spot of glue. squeeze it in checking how things fit all things together that's good nice and clean on there two to go so I think we get the last two done. I'll show you that as assembled when we've done it. All right.
So with the big glue up done, so we've got those all assembled. Just a push fit, no clamps, nothing too tight to put together. If it's too tight, you're really going to struggle. Just checking things are level if you find it's out, like pushing it around a little bit, just level it up. You know, so it should sit nicely. That's our main carcass frame. So now we've got to do all those panels to fit in. All right, so we've done something quite small already. We're going to really shrink it down in size and material now. All right, so that's the first few bits, but that's your carcass. Something as that. That's almost quite nice in it by itself. We'll just leave it like that. Right, with the framework done, up to there, we're glued together. We've now got to do the panel infill bits. All right, so let's take this stuff. So this is still tulip wood, the same as we've used for the frame. We've got some darker stuff for that. Gone for very pale stuff for this, which is quite nice. I machined the board down to five mil thick, and then I've written down carefully on a band saw, I've set everything up nice and accurately, to get little squares. So I've got one rough edge at the moment. Current thickness this through the machine thickness, so it's quite a shallow section, so actually when I've got the frame together, we can sand that off, okay, without causing too much damage. I might try and machine thickness it. Oh, forget it. Put these through in the machine. No, you're gonna break them up, okay? So I can get a five mil board, then rip them down. So let's be really careful setting that fence up. Nice sharp blade, lower the guys right down, rip them into little squares, okay? From there, we need to cut. We've got quite a, re a repetitive number to do. So to give you an idea, there is 20 of the long ones, 18, oh sorry, 28 of the next ones, and then I need five of the next ones down. So I've already marked on my board to give me an idea of. So we're gonna use that length cut board we've used before. We've got square stock on the end. It means the bits of wood can come into here. I can put four or five in one go. We can cross cut them. So let's get you in, we can have a look. Okay, so with the batons we've got, and we know we've got that one rough side, so I'm trying to put that down on the base, longer one, so I can feel that. Again, by doing this, I can see what the ends are like. I'm coming to the end stop here. These are about 10 mil over length, either end of the little framework to add a bit of strength while we do the joint. Now this way I can check what's happening, how the board line up, if there's any heavy snipe cutouts on the end, I can lose. They look quite good, I've got five, one, two, three, four, five. We need 20 in total, so let's do a batch of five. Cross cut block we've used before, that gives me a way of pulling up, so all it's got is a bandsaw cut in reality. I can line up with my pencil line on the board. Got our Japanese saw. Right. How easy was that? It means they're all the same length, we can do exactly the same, we've moved the next lot in, so the short ones we take out of the way, we can get a few more long ones, and we keep cutting. So we cut those, we obviously need the shorter ones, and then shorter again. Get the long ones out first, all right? and then obviously the little bits, we'll make some of the short bits. As simple as that. So there's quite a lot of cutting on this. Once we've cut them, we're going to put them into little bundles and wrap them up. We're going to show you that in the next bit. So, having cut them all the lumps, this is the top rails. How to hold them together so we can cut them as one? There goes some masking tape. I'll do it the easiest thing I can do. So again, I'm using that lump stop board. I'll just wrap that tape around. Pull it in nice and tight. Good. Put that off. Turn it round. Do the same. Look, that's not going to quite go, so that's a little bit. Right, so the mask and tape, can hold those. That's it, helps identify what they are. We've got top and bottom. So these ones are. So if I label it on the masking tape, we can see what they are. So at the moment, we now have all of these. Now this is facing me a little bit. This is enough to do all four sides. So I have right hand main one, left hand, top rails, intermediate main ones, because they're slightly different, there's one less cut. Bottom rails, again, intermediate, vertical rails. So I've done them all as little packs. So the next thing is we can start to mark out the joints and where they've got to be cut. But by strapping them together, you can cut it as one, so it makes it so much easier to move it about. All right, so they're each labeled so I know what they are, where they're going. What have we now got to do? Start laying out the joints and get them cut. So we've done, having got the drawing, I can mark on for the uprights where they cut out. So, so I've marked off one stick. I can use that as a marking out stick. 
So we'll bring it back over against what we have. Get our square back in. Get things lined back up. We can draw our lines across. Why not a knife line? These are quite a fiddly little cut. Um, knife line might be too deep for this. I'm finding pencil will give me a guide. The bits we're going to cut out are going to look quite square, but by using that one setup board, I'll come right down there, pinching things together, should give us a way of marking them out quickly and easily. Gently working down through. A couple of these I need to look at. I mean, this is the whole length, and I need to must be take out a couple of them that aren't on here. Got to turn this round so I can get support of the square now. So things are pushed down against that length stock. Right, so mark those all off. Now, on the left hand one, one at the top, or the bottom one doesn't have a cut out. So I need to check on the drawing which one is, because there I can scribble it out. All right? I know when I stick that marks them all up at the moment. The intermediates in between this three or per panel all the way up through. So I'm using the one stick at the moment because that gives me more accuracy. Then all I've got to look at is what don't I want on each of those outside ones. All right, so I've marked up those, I do the same for all the uprights, bottoms, tops, lots of marking out with these little groups. Okay, so get them all done, put them back in their packs, know where they go. And from there, I've got to start cutting those joints. So with all the little panels ready, we've marked out. Next, I just start the cutting. So I can use that board again. It's quite useful to have something, first of all, to pull up against. I've got that little block to help me guide the saw. I've got a razor to give me about halfway position. I've got to be a bit careful. Things are starting to get scored on my bench a little bit. It's been used a lot. So we know we can move this along. This is the left hand one, so I've worked out which one needed taken out in between. So I rubbed the lines out, that was easy enough to do. So we've got our positions. We use our block, small Japanese saw, tall saw, nice thin blade, stiff back, quite close so I can get with this handle wise, I can get good grip up in here. So this allows me to bring things in. Next thing we've got, scrap paste. Same size as we're using, I can work out as a spacer. Three mil chisel, Japanese chisel is quite unusual because and other people say it's bent, it's not straight. Now, if you look down, it, it's all about giving it clearance for where it comes up to the barrel. So, actually, I can get right up to here lengthwise, which is quite unusual for a chisel this size. So, that's all about if you look down the back, it doesn't look dead straight. That'll be why it's about raising the handle up a little bit. So, all those little things are going to play a part. So, let's start our cutting then. So, I'm putting the guide block in, I'm holding it so it helps get it square, put the saw on. I want to be cutting to the right hand side of the saw, just so I can see that pencil line. So I can bring it back, I can lay the saw on, wiggle the block back a little bit. I don't want to be, that's not bad. Come up a bit, so I can play around a little bit. That's all. Just take a bit of time on that first position. This is full saw. Now we don't need to go too deep with this. I'm trying to use the MDF as a guide block, how deep we need to be. We'll get a little strip of what we want to inlay. I can check my position, move things about. I know your pencil line should give you a good guide. It's nice, isn't it, just to double check off that button. First one done. Next one, same again. So checking for pencil line. Remember, you're not actually cutting very deep. Two and a half mil in reality. Have our batten back in. Look, double check there. There, bring it up again. Using that spacer just as a guide. So we've got our slots. We can make life easier because I'm naturally right handed, I'm going to turn it around. Now I'll go to left hand line now, as long as I repeat this on all of them. Good. There we 
place it in, double check things. Back in line. Another thing you start to get into habit is you start to count your saw strokes. How many you're pulling? I'll give you a guide of the game. I'm doing four. Next one up. Don't want that yet. Let's do that bit first. That cut. Right, so we've got our cuts. Now, if you can see, a bit halfway, there's a little bit deeper. It won't show when we get to it. And down in here. Alright, so we've got those cuts. They look good. Now we've got to chisel them out. I don't want to clean the area, so I'm going to bring up on here a little bit. I can move that block about if we need to. So I can have something just in to behind it to give me something to push against. So I've got a clamp in here. Put that in. I can still move this, but I've got some way of now juicing any break out. So using that Japanese shuttle, just going to pair across. If I get a spacer button, will it quite fit? Yeah, a little bit tight, but we can play with that in a minute. Let's just check we're down to where we want to be. I'm going to bring this up while we've got the chisel. Pair across nice and gently. Nice sharp chisel, no mallet for this. This is easy to pair across. Move up a bit more. Handle down low when I start. I get to here, fingertips pushing down on the board. I hope we've gone halfway. That over, that looks good for a second. We've got the other end to do. Once we're here, I said you we could start to check things. Do they fit? Now, again, remember, you want this to ideally be tight. That's not bad. A little bit. So, that Japanese style, I can bring back up on edge. Just fits my gap. Good. Put that in. That'd be nice. Nice, tight fit. Grip on there, so I can easily just adjust these just a fraction. That won't take anything out the bottom if there's nothing as an edge on the side. That just lightly allows me to align them. You could use normal hand file. Japanese rasps, really effective. So, at that end, turn around, we've got the saw cuts down on here, we can repeat that. We've obviously got a lot of these to cut out. I haven't worked out how many joints there are in this, but there, there's quite a few. You can kind of see, I'm not taking too much time. Now, chisel again. In. Again, chopping the handle down. Fingertips just putting a bit of pressure on the block, making sure I'm down. So we can just gently across that saw cut will stop any break out and splintering as long as we've gone deep enough which is why we've used that bit of MDF on here. Again, chisel, hold it flat, pair across, let's just slide this up a little bit. A bit too much there so drop the handle down. Doesn't need too much force. <laughs> need to have that break out bar on the back. Stop your splintering out. That's good. So again, we've got the same thing now. I reckon this joint's too tight. A little bit off on my saw cut. I can see my pencil line just fractionally. Before we start playing with that, let's just see that won't go. Just a bit. This one looks good if I can clear the mess out. All right, so you might need just widening fractionally. The more accurate you can cut your saw, the better. But some of us kind of go have that issue. Let's get rid of that dirt between there, that debris that dropped in. A bit tight on there. So if I pull it first, it'll widen it gently. How about we pull the file? That'd be good. This one, same again. This isn't taking off anything much. A little drop me down level to where we want our cut. Have a quick look. 
So we're back into there, that's good. So let's see if we can go all the way across. So you can see how we can adjust the fit to make sure they fit nicely. So having cut all those little joints, all those fancy little hairy joints, uh, you've got to carefully unwrap them. So I'll take them out, I've laid them out how we need. Cut the masking tape with a knife. Don't go trying to unpeel it, you'll snap the bits trying to get them out. So carefully take them out. In front of me, I've laid out one side panel. All those little components where they are, so I know where things have got to go. I've been quite rigorous on checking through before we got to this stage that things will interlock. That little thing of just checking the whips are right. That little thing with the file can be good. All right, things need to fit firmly, but need to be able to get them together. So I've done all that. Now is that stage of, I've got to glue it up. So this is going to take a little bit of effort. Laid things out, know where things have got to go. So we're going to start with, so we've got the panel, we've got the uprights, little spaces in between, the three bars, go down here, these have got to go. A couple of little bits to cut. All takes a little bit of work, okay? And again, we've got to try and glue it up. Try not to break anything, it's quite fragile. So we've got our PVA, silly glue brush, and I think we'll get you nearer. Take it off again. frame. 
So you can see with these quite fiddly to glue together. Lots of little spots of glue. Don't need loads. You're going to squeeze it everywhere. And then it's difficult to clean up. So little spots in. Tap it in with your pin hammer. Not putting too much weight in. Not using the end of it. Just nice and gently. Got four of those to get to that stage. And then also glue the top up. Leave them to dry. Um, can be worthwhile leaving them to dry. Put something as a weight on top. Stop them curling up a little bit with the tension you've just generated putting it together. Try and keep them flat. All right, so let them dry. And the next stage, we're going to clean those up. Do it dry. I've got the glue all set. Got to trim these off now. We're using a small pull saw and pull them downwards, trying to get support in underneath. I don't want to break these up. Being too vigorous with the saw, just pulling down. The reason these are on there when we made it, just add a bit more strength. Flip it over. We go right over there because I've got a support grade. We're cutting through those fibres quickly on the top. The other side has got that hardened green coming through. So the flush cut saw work nicely just to trim these. Get out on there, we can get that in a minute. If you're going to say, can I use my bandsaw? You could. If you're going to use your bandsaw, put full spents on the table. A little bit of plywood just to stop these going down through the table. I'll quite get my saw in there, so this one I've got to eye out. Having trimmed all those little bits off the end of that saw, look, now we can actually sand this flat, clean it up. So, difficult to take a block of sand over this. Much easier maybe take the work to the sander. So in here, all we've done, a bit of spray out glue, a bit of board, spray the paper down, stick it down. Can't use double sided tape, we can move it back and forwards. We can flip it over. This is just going to sand it in. Alright, just clean up those surfaces, not the edges, just the faces. I can turn it round, work round it. So having sanded it flat, we trimmed the little bits off. Now we've just got to fit it. A few little lumps on the side were not quite as accurate with my saw. I want it to fit inside here nice and tightly that way up. I've got the outer structures running vertical, so I know where they are here. Which way? That's my front. That's got to go in there. All right, so I'm looking at the line where it continues to break through everything else. So that's the way it's got to go in. So now we can use the shooting board. Square face now. I've got little bits to trim. So I can work on those. I'm looking at those on this cross rail at the bottom. And those come down the line, just check I've got any down through. How about we flip it over now because we can work off the same square end. Last bit we haven't checked yet, the bottom. Lots of little bumps to get on there. Let's clean those in. Hand pressure on the plane is actually pushing down on the board. What I don't want to be doing, tilting the plane. So I keep it nice and flat. Not too heavy a cut. Which was my front, that way round. Start to have a look and see where it'll fit. Got a little bit of whip still to come off. Height wise, still a little bit. Flip it over. Can't trim this on a table saw to fit in there. Look at that, isn't that lovely? So, just goes in. Now we've got to do sides. Okay. 
Let's go down through here and then we check the fit again. And as I said, we want this to fit relatively tight at the top. Just go it in, bottom, a little bit to come out. I've got to go careful getting this in and out. There we go. Got to repeat it all four sides. And we've got the top. Now these are literally just a push fit. So they need that accuracy of that little bit with the shooting board just to have a light cut off. Get it to fit. And from there the next stage will be put the paper backing on. So now it gets you up to there, you can see how they just slot in and push in. The accuracy of using the shooting board really gives you that little bit of control. So, having sanded up all those panels, we've then fitted them. So let's gently take this back out. We need to get them to fit so they will hold in place. Now we've got to do a little bit of finishing. So we've got the panels, I've numbered each one. I know where the front is, so they're numbered to go on the frame. So everything will go back in. Finish-wise, a bit of a difficult thing on this. We're going to oil the frame-wise. That's easy to do. Uh, why are we going to oil that? It'll bring the colour out. It'll give me a satin matte finish, nothing too glossy, which is going to look nice. The panels I'm going to use a satin spray. I can't use the oil on those because I've got to stick the paper to it when we finish. So therefore the oil will stop the paper sticking nicely. So all we're going to do is spray the front face. So let's do the oil to start with. So we've got some Liberon finishing oil. And we'll do a small bit. All we're really going to do is brush this on. So I expect if we get you in just a little bit nearer, you can start to see this colour. So this coat will really absorb. So the reason I've got the cardboard, and the excess will soak into the cardboard. We can also work it back. Okay. Not too much of this. So having sprayed and lacquered those, we can actually put the paper on the back. So the whole idea of spraying on the card, it'll absorb the excess spray, but we haven't got any on the back edge, so that won't affect how this is going to stick. The paper we're going to use is tracing paper. All right, so something quite easy to get that will allow the light to come through, but give you that cloudy type effect we're after. How to stick it down? This was a bit of a dilemma if I use a spray glue. No, it's going to go everywhere. So uh, we go with something like some PVA. So we've got a melamine board. We can spread the glue out, nice thin layer. All right, we can move it about a bit. That'll work nicely. Pick up our frame, drop it on. Not too much movement. Now the tricky bit, pick it back up. So have a look, I'm gonna move my glue around. See if we can get a bit more there, freshen it up a bit. And I'll make sure I get definitely those outside edges. Push down through. A little bit of my fingertips there, so we take that off. All right, so we got that bit. A bit of tracing paper, I'm gonna put up on here. Let's just move this one over. This is the one we've done. Down. Aim with this to drop it on, not to move it. So we don't want to go wiggling it about. While I'm moving up and down the bench with the block on, it's quite important in a minute. Right, that's done. Again, we cut the tracing paper so it's oversized, makes it easier in a minute. Weight it down, give it something just to hold it in place. So we'll run through the others, you can get a bit nearer if you like. And now again, just working down the bars, pushing it down onto that thin layer of glue. We don't want loads of glue, it's going to come up through and we'll show on the paper. Tricky bit now, we've got to pick it up. A bit of paper. Lay it on. Drop straight down. Push it down firmly.
write it down. Wow, there we go. So all right, gonna be a little bit patient with us. We've done all of those little joints, put it all together, we've glued the paper on. Then it bring it to life, all right? Now, as I said at the beginning of this, it's intimidating with all those little joints, all those little halving joints. Things like the saw, the chisel, real basic things if you set it up, take your time, look what you can achieve. Most of us go, I'm never gonna make one of those. Kind of my philosophy when I started this. Now, you can say, you've got a background in furniture, Quite a tricky thing to do, still, okay? But if you follow the step-by-step -step bits we did on the video, you too can have one of these, all right? And I mean, I think it looks quite spectacular. The color of the legs and all we've used was some tulip wood. So the tulip wood, darker stuff, lighter stuff, get a contrast material, will really bring it to light, all right? Hope you've enjoyed. We'll see you for more woodworking wisdom. I think I'll leave you there.